my schedule for science view next week is a studio shoot and oh hi i'm michelle this laptop here is light and easy to carry around and on top of that it's very sturdy the secret lies in the magnesium alloy that's used right here it's a very hard substance that's difficult to process Today, I'll introduce you to a Takumi innovator who developed a unique method to facilitate the process. Let's go. We visited Osaka City. The metal processing company is located in an industrial zone of the city that's filled with small and mid-sized companies. Hello, I'm Michelle. Hello, I'm Tamai. Today's Takumi is Kenji Tamai. He is an engineer who excels in metal processing. I heard that your company makes a lot of things with magnesium alloys, and you really do have a variety. Yes, we make the top covers for laptops, smartphone parts, and many other things. Magnesium alloys are sturdy and lightweight, so they're used to make portable electronic devices, and the demand is growing. Would you like to try holding one? Yes, please. Whoa, this is surprising. It's this light? Yes, it is. It's like a piece of paper. It's so light. We went to see the factory. This is where the pieces that you saw earlier are made. We make laptop casings. We make about 3,500 pieces per day and are the only company in Japan that can produce this amount. Impressive! Until now, there were two main ways to process magnesium alloys. One method was to pour the molten magnesium alloy into a metal mold. It worked well for complicated shapes, but the drawback was that when making thin objects, the magnesium alloy would not flow in properly. The other method was by press working. It was good for making thin products, but the metal tended to crack when complicated shapes were made. To prevent it from cracking, it had to be pressed little by little over the course of two or three times. But here, it seems to be pressed just once. That's right. The technology that we developed was a method for processing it in one shot. What kind of technology is it? The secret is in the vapor that you see rising. Our company originally made metal molds. We came up with the idea of heating the metal molds. Heating the metal molds? Yes. These two? Yes. We heat them up to nearly 200 degrees. The metal becomes hot, and we process it quickly while it's warm. Heating the material prevents it from cracking during the press processing. However, magnesium alloys expand and contract when heated or cooled. On top of that, the metal mold also expands when heated. Developing a temperature control system was extremely difficult. For example, to make a size 10 product, the metal mold has to be a size 9 at room temperature. When the metal mold is heated, it expands to a size 11. The magnesium alloy is processed while the metal mold is in this state. Heated by the metal mold, the magnesium alloy is processed as a size 11, but contracts as it cools. As a result, the finished product is a size 10 and in accordance with the original blueprint. But the metal mold is made out of iron and its expanding and contracting rate differs from that of a magnesium alloy. So actually, that difference too is calculated and included in the production process. That must have required a lot of calculations. Yes, it required a lot of complex calculations. So deciding the size of a metal mold was extremely difficult. The shape and size of the product were also factors. It took about four to five years of trial and error. 
the biggest differences seen in the product's corners. Until now, the corners had to curve widely to prevent materials under 0.5 millimeters thick from cracking. But by using this heated press system, it became possible to create almost right angle corners. With this new technique, it became possible to create a very delicate and complicated design with just one pressing process. With a wider range of moldings, they were able to adapt to various demands. This is a completely new technique, so I'm very happy about it. Manufacturing technology is advancing day by day. What seems impossible right now might be easily accomplished in, say, a year from now. So it's important to not set boundaries for yourself. Even if it can't be done now, if you keep trying, a new technology might be developed that will serve as a springboard. That's what I always keep in mind. I brought some magnesium alloy pieces that were made at the Takumi factory. Mm. This is a piece that is used in smartphones, and this is a laptop keyboard frame. Dr. Gathright Tomoko, what do you think of the pieces in front of you? Well, I guess this is also part from a laptop. It's really light and thin, of course. And when you look at it, there's a lot of detail into the shape, too. It's very light. I would never have guessed that this was made in one press. Accurately calculating and controlling the expansion and the contraction of both the metal mold and the magnesium alloy must have been very difficult. I'm sure it was. So Takumi's expression would become very animated whenever he talked about magnesium. It was the same with the development staff as well. I think their passion for magnesium helped bring this technique about. Thank you very much, Michelle. So, Dr. Uh,